It is the second year of World War I, and Germany has instituted a blockade of the British Isles, hoping to bring it to its knees through starvation. Germany loudly proclaims to the world that any ship entering the territorial waters of Britain will be sunk. German submarines, called U-boats, terrifyingly keep this promise. One ship that defies this threat is the ocean liner, the Lusitania, traveling from New York to Liverpool. Most passengers believe the Germans will never sink a ship that includes non-British nationals, let alone women and children. They are wrong. On May 7, 1915, a German torpedo strikes the ocean liner, sending it to the bottom of the sea. Of the nearly 2,000 people aboard, 128 of them, which are Americans, only 761 survived. Today, we look at one of the survivors of this tragedy, Val Nash and how God providentially uses her heartbreaking experience aboard the Lusitania to bring about great good. Our story begins in eastern Kansas, where a young engineer and British-born national, and now Kansas City resident, Theodore Nash, purchases a beautiful and scenic piece of land located on the highest point in Wyandotte County, Kansas. In these secluded woods, he builds a cabin as a retreat for his beloved Belle Saunders, a school teacher from Detroit who he marries in 1911. The newlyweds spend several summers on the property, hiking and camping and enjoying nature. Then, in 1915, Theodore surprises his wife by buying tickets to travel from New York to his childhood home in Birmingham, England, aboard the ocean liner Lusitania. It is to be a belated honeymoon. He and Belle discuss the dangers of traveling during wartime, but agree that the Germans would never sink an unarmed passenger ship with women and children aboard. However, they decide if the unimaginable happens and all the lifeboats fill with women and children, they will meet their fate together. On May 7, 1915, Belle stands on the deck with other passengers, thrilled to see Ireland. She thinks to herself, it's a glorious day and I'm confident we will reach England without meeting anything German. We are protected by English gunboats and submarines and surely nothing can happen to us on such a beautiful day on such a placid sea. Rushing across the now reeling ship, she finds her husband, and in the confusion and chaos, the young couple assists six frightened passengers with their life jackets. As the ship begins to sink, it lifts so steeply, Bal and Theodore must cling to the rail of a lifeboat with one hand, while firmly holding on to one another with their other hand, fingers intertwined. Years later, Bell, in an interview with the Kansas City Star, recalls the chaos aboard the Lusitania, stating the explosion through the deck on which we stood upwards, and I was shot into the air. I don't know how far up I was catapulted, nor how I struck the sea. When I recovered consciousness, I was far beneath the water. I knew that because the light from the rays coming down through the water were very long. Soon, Bell surfaces and is pulled into a lifeboat by another survivor. Once on land, Bell vainly searches every hospital and morgue in that region of Ireland for a beloved Theodore, but his body is never recovered. Bell returns to America alone. She is able to continue making payments on the beautiful piece of land, which was the source of so much joy to her and her husband, thanks to a fellow survivor of the Lusitania, Theodate Pope. Following the catastrophic sinking of the Lusitania, Theodate is fished from the ocean by seamen who declare her dead. Bell insists she's not dead and that she be given immediate medical attention. All the seamen believe Bell is out of her mind and in shock from the day's events. But Bell continues to insist that Theodate is alive. Finally, the seamen submit to her pleas. Miraculously, Theodate isn't dead and the stunned rescuers revive her. In gratitude for Bell's efforts, Theodate helps her continue payments on her property in Kansas. In 1927, Bell deeds 180 acres of her scenic property to the Boy Scouts. The acreage becomes a Boy Scout retreat called Camp Nash, located in Wyandotte County, Kansas. Today, the land is not just marked by the tombstones of Theodore and Bell Nash, but by the thousands of Boy Scouts whose lives have been impacted by the natural beauty of the land and by the opportunity to develop the qualities of service, character, and self-sufficiency. You see, even in the midst of sorrow, God's sovereign hand reaches out and blesses many. 
A story that seemed to tragically end in the sea had one more page, the story of God's redemption found in the land called Camp Nash. We hope you enjoyed this hidden tale of a history maker. If you did, please click here to subscribe. And you will probably want to watch this amazing story of the Cold War era pilot known as the Candy Bomber.